Hi everybody, welcome to my channel. I am Jen, the Caffeinated Crafter, and this is a floss tube extra. Woo, jazz hands, jazz hands. Um, today I'm going to be doing a tutorial on parking in cross stitch. Um, I have seen so many people on Facebook and in my groups and everything ask questions on how to park, what's it all about, I don't get it, because usually when they see it, there's like a million parked threads already. And I was doing, to, for me to learn, I did a search on YouTube on parking tutorials. And I watched a bunch of them. I still didn't get it. And then I watched this one and I, God, I can't remember who it was now. It was a blonde haired lady. I think she had an accent. I watched it like, I don't know, two years ago. And she explained it and I finally got it. Um, but all the other ones I saw, they would explain it and they would show it on paper and it's like, okay. But then when they would show their pattern, they were already in the middle of it. So then you go kind of right back to being confused. So I wanted to start a project from the beginning, blank fabric, uh, so that you could see kind of how to, how to get it started. I'm going to kind of adjust this just a bit. And I'm finally able to do this because I got a new stand. Not really a new stand. It's more like a clamp with a little gooseneck thing. That's really hard to maneuver. But um, anyway... Um, I am going to show you using, let me pull it up so you can see it. This pattern right here, I'm not going to be showing the entire pattern, just a portion of it. This is called Trucks and Goldens. It's a snippet. It's from the Cross Stitch Studio. I'm going to link them down below. I've spoken with Betsy. Isn't that cute? Um, I've spoken with Betsy and she gave me the okay to do this because she also wanted to see the video because <laughs> she was like, I don't understand parking either, but it's a smaller piece. It's 175 by 175. It's got 88 colors. Um, I have actually seen this stitched. My friend Carrie stitched it and it turned out really cute. Um, so thank you, Betsy, so much for allowing me to show a small piece of the pattern to do this tutorial. Very much appreciated. All right, so um, I'm going to try to get going as quickly as possible because one other tutorial I saw, they kept showing all these different things in their house before they finally got to it and it was like driving me crazy. So anyway, the only rule with parking, there is one rule. You don't talk about parking, like Fight Club. No, I'm just kidding. Um, the only rule with parking is that you always park your thread in the same location regarding the stitch. So when I do my stitches, I start bottom left to top right. That's my bottom leg, right? I go from here to here. And then my top leg is always like this, okay? So when I park, I always park in the bottom left corner of the square no matter what I'm doing. So because I park on the bottom of the stitch, I always start my pieces at the top so that I'm not trying to, because if I started from the bottom, if my stitch ends here and I got to park right here, it could end up, I, I could end up like pulling a thread out or what have you. So if you park, if you start your stitch at the top, you may, you may want to start, because you can park going from the bottom. Like my friend Stuart, he does that. He starts his projects at the bottom and he works his way up and he just parks above. Like he parks in the top part of the stitch. So you can park wherever you want on the stitch itself. You can start your project wherever you want. You can start top left, top right, bottom left, bottom right. Doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. As long as you park your thread in the same location on the stitch every time. That is where you will not, that's how you don't lose, like, you know, get confused. That's the only rule. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into the, go into my pattern. Now, just quick, quick rundown of Pattern Keeper. If, well, let me pause for a second. You can park using a paper pattern. You can, it is possible. You just need two highlighters. You need something like a, a light highlighter, like a yellow, um, so to mark the parked thread. And then you need a darker highlighter, like a blue or a purple, that you would actually mark off the stitches you did. That way, when you get to the parked threads, you can just color over the yellow and it covers it up. 
because if you tried using one highlighter, it would get way too confusing because you're like, wait, what's done? What's not? Um, okay, so back to, I'm using Pattern Keeper because obviously that's how I have my pattern loaded. If you want to get rid of this right here, if you want to get rid of that, you just hit this arrow right here and it'll show you more of the pattern. To find a symbol, you hit the, search, the magnifying glass right here, the little search thing, and you just tap a symbol. And it's gonna tell you up here what color it is, the symbol, oh, I just changed it, the symbol, and how many stitches there are of that color remaining. That's why when, if you see somebody saying, I hit a zero, it's, there's no more stitches of that color in their Pattern Keeper app, or in their you know pattern that they have on Pattern Keeper. If, when you're in markup mode, you see how I, these symbols are highlighted and I can't do anything with those so you don't accidentally mark off threads that you're not working on. And if you accidentally marked one off that you didn't mean to, you can just tap it. It'll take that box away. The box means that if I hit this check, it's going to mark it off as, um, as it's complete. If I do a bunch of them and I'm like, oh, I really messed that up and I don't feel like tapping on all of those, you can hit clear down here. It'll take all that away. Your other option would be to hit the search key again. You can tap on the symbol or any symbol and it'll take that all away for you. It will not mark off. Like if I check that off, right? And I'm like, oh, I didn't mean to do all that. If I hit the search button, it'll take all of that away except for that one right there. So I'll just go into markup mode, hit that and then hit my little frog and it'll clear that off for me. Okay, so to, park your, to mark your parked threads, you're gonna go into settings, scroll down to the bottom. Down here at the bottom, it says shortcuts. You're gonna tap on that. And it gives you shortcuts that you can pick from, right? So I'm gonna say in markup mode, double click on single stitch. I already have it marked because I filmed this already and I didn't like it. So when you tap on that, it gives you shortcuts that you can do. So they give you four options for where you're gonna park your thread. I'm selecting park thread in lower left corner. So you're gonna get out of that. So now, just to show you for an example, when you double tap on a symbol, it'll give me my blue triangle. And you can change the color of the triangle if you would like. If I double tap again, it'll take that parked mark away. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. And I will talk more about the parking, about parking um, as I'm stitching. So you're not just like watching me stitch it with nothing else. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to work in this 10 by 10 block right here. I'm only going to stitch this 10 by 10 block. And what I, and I'll talk about why I'm going to do it this way in just in just a little bit. But I'm going to park my threads over here. I usually will park them below, but I'm gonna try something different this time. I'm gonna park them over here to the right. So I'm gonna get, you can pick any symbol you want, but just to make, because I'm not working on gridded fabric, I'm gonna start up in the corner. I'm gonna select this and 676. So I'm gonna grab my thread. So. And I, and I do a loop start. So I do a ridiculously long piece of thread. It's like, you can't even see it, but it's like really long. I double it up so that the ends meet like this. And I'm a thread licker. Thread my needle. I have bad eyeballs, so it's hard for me to see now. I really should get one of them needle threaders. So it's getting harder for me to see the eye of the needle. It makes me sad. It just recently happened in the past like couple weeks too, I noticed. There we go. So I have my end, my ends, my open ends uh, through, through the eye of the needle. You can't even see what I'm doing. And then I have my loop on the other end with a cat hair. <laughs> All right, so I'm not worried precisely where I'm starting only because this fabric is ridiculously large for the pattern that I'm doing, but that's okay. And let me actually get my hands positioned how I'm going to stitch. I'm gonna do two-handed stitching, so it's gonna be a little bit slower than what I normally do. 
So I, so I normally will start in the bottom left and go into the top right. So when I do a loop start, I go into the top right, pull the, th pull the loop so it's close to the end there. Then I'm gonna go up in the bottom left, start pulling. When the loop starts closing in, I'm gonna catch the loop with, catch the loop with my needle hole so it's taut. You can go in either hole. It doesn't matter. I've done both. It does not matter. But you're going to go back down in one of those holes, pull it through. And now my thread is secured. And let's go ahead and get started. I'm not showing you the pattern as I'm stitching it. I'm just going to stitch because I feel like this is like cross stitch 102. Like, you know how when you're in school and you have to take like English 101, English 102, you know, algebra, you know, anatomy and physiology one and two. Well, when you go into anatomy and physiology two, they expect you to understand the basics that you were taught in at AMP one, right? Well, that's kind of how this is. I'm expecting the people who watch this already know how to stitch. You don't need to be taught how to make an X. You don't need to be taught how to read a pattern. You know how to do that. You just need to be taught what, what the hell this craziness is that is the parking of the threads. If you don't know how to stitch and you're watching this and you're like, what the hell is going on? Let me know. I'll do a I'll do a stitching tutorial. I don't I don't mind. So fun fact. This is take four. <laughs> I have this same freaking square in four other locations on my fabric. Why is that, you ask? Well, the first time I filmed this. I accidentally filmed it in portrait mode. So it was going to upload sideways. And I was debating if I was going to go ahead and do it anyway. And then the more I looked at it, the more it bugged me. And I said, you know what? Forget it. I'm not doing it. I tried rotating my video. Uh, one of my friends um, sent me a link to download, like, you know, how to, like, download Movie Maker on my computer. But it was taking too long, I could, and I couldn't get my phone to connect to my computer because I have an iPhone and I have a PC. And they don't like each other. So, I was like, you know what, I'll just do a second one. That's fine. It's okay. So I wrote, I flipped my fabric around and I filmed a second one. And I got about, I don't know, 30, 40 minutes in. And I realized that the damn thing stopped recording on me. And I didn't know it. And I was like, son of a motherless goat. So... I was like, you know, it's not meant to happen. So I sat down with a different, with a different whip or new start. Cause I'm in, I'm in started all September. So I was like, I just grabbed a different start and I was like, I'll just do this new start. And, um, I was working on that for a little bit and I started thinking about it some more and I was like, you know, I really want to try again. So I flipped my fabric around to a third corner and I was filming and everything was going peachy and then my phone stopped recording again and I'm like, what the hell? And I was like, you know what? You know what the problem has to be? It has to be that I don't have enough space on my phone. So I went and looked and sure enough, I didn't have enough space on my phone. So I deleted some stuff off of it that I really don't need and it cleared up a lot of space. So now I flip my fabric over to the fourth corner <laughs> and 
and I'm trying again. The things I do for you guys. I'm just kidding. <laughs> so, all right, so let's discuss why we park. Like, why? Why are we doing this? Why? What's the point? Well, the point is, is to help minimize the mistakes in counting. Because I don't know about y'all, but my ninth grader counts better than I do when it comes to this. Like, I make mistakes all over the place. Like yesterday, after I filmed my floss tube, I started on Gothic House from Stitching Jewels. There's already two mistakes in that thing. Two. I mean, yank. I, I looked, and it's not gonna make it's not gonna make a big difference. But when I realized the mistake I had made, it was like ten rows up from when I noticed the mistake, and I was like, I'm doing that piece one over one. I was like, I am not ripping all that out. Bump that. So, yeah, it already has two mistakes. You won't even be able to tell, though, because I already can't tell where they are. <laughs> when, once I got done for the night, I looked at it. I'm like, okay, are these mistakes really obvious? Nope, I can't even. Oopsie, sorry. Stabilize that. There we go. Um, I can't even tell where the mistakes are, and I'm the one who made them. So, anywho. It helps minimize your mistakes because when you're parking, you are focused, you are focusing your stitching on a small section. You can do a 10 by 10 block. You can do 10 by 20 block. You can do 20 by 20, 40 by, you know, it doesn't matter what size you do. It really doesn't. Um, but I... I love cross country stitching, like within a within an area, because I like being able to just like get the thing done or what have you. But I make a lot of mistakes with cross country. You wouldn't know it looking at my pieces, but the reason why you don't know it is because they have so much confetti that you can't tell. This method here, this parking method really helps with pieces with high confetti like a lot of the large full coverage pieces do because you're only focused on one small little square like small little section and you don't end up getting getting lost where am i i'm lost okay um, if you are somebody who likes a neat back, then this ain't going to work for you. But then again, if you like a neat back, you aren't doing full coverage projects because when you get into the full coverage projects that have a crap ton of confetti, it is impossible to have a neat back. Impossible. Unless you're pin stitching every stitch which is stupid i mean it, it really is to do to to cut your threads that frequently that's just dumb so but yeah my full coverage pieces my backs are a mess my smaller pieces they are way neater um but you know what having a messy back it's okay it is okay it does not matter as long as it's not like all knotted up like a friend of mine, she, she has, she showed us the back of one of her projects and it is, it is a hot mess, but it works. I mean, like you can't tell from the front. You can't tell. All right. So I'm all done with this color in this block. So I'm going to go into my little marking mode here, right? I'm going to press and hold. Select all unfinished highlighted stitches in the square. Select that, it'll highlight all those. Now, I wanna find where I'm gonna park. I'm going to park as close to my working block as I possibly can, and as far up in the corner as I possibly can. Um, and I'll show you why when we get to the part where we're working in our threads. So I'm gonna park in this spot, not that, I'm gonna park in this spot right here. So. 
the one that's like diagonal to, to that last stitch that I just did. Find my needle. So I'm gonna come up in my bottom left corner and unthread my needle. And I'm going to double tap right there to mark my parked thread. Check off my thing, it clears those stitches off for me. Now I'm gonna move on to the next, to my next symbol I wanna do, 3856. So I've seen some people say that all those threads, it just looks super confusing. Well, yeah, it looks super conf confusing when you're not the one working the pattern. If it's not your project, then yeah, it's gonna look confusing to you because you know, you're not the one who has your pattern marked. You mark your pattern where you park your threads. Now, when you get to that section, when you select that, that symbol, you're gonna have a thread there. God dog it, I can't get my needle threaded. I should get a needle threader. All right. So one thing that I've, that I've noticed in the past, and I know that a lot of this has to do with my tension is when I, when I work in columns, I get lines. And I know it's my tension because I pull my stitches tight. And like, you know, it's like I'm trying to put a corset on my fabric or something, like I'm mad at it. Um, so this project is going to be a little bit of an experiment to see if I can figure out a way to not get the lines. Because I pull down when, I, when I'm parking below, I'm pulling everything down in 10 bytes. So I've never seen anybody with a row line. I've seen diagonal lines. I've seen people get lines when they're doing diagonal stitching. I've never seen anybody get a row line before. So I'm gonna try it this way. I need to come up with a term for this before someone steals my idea. <laughs> okay, that's all the stitching for this color. So I'm gonna park, there's no A here, so I'm gonna park in this column here, and it's gonna be this symbol, and when you look at this parked thread, you can, you can count from wherever you want, like, but when you look at this symbol, it's three down and one over, okay? Find my needle. So going from the parked thread up here, it's three down, so one, two, three, right there. God bless. So it's one, two, three, and then one over. And then double tap to mark your parked thread. Check that off. We're gonna move on to another color. Let's do I. Actually, no, we're gonna keep going down the row like I was down the column, 3047. Now, mind you, since I have now filmed this four times, I already know that this color right here, I'm gonna be ending this thread. <laughs> There's just too many stitches in this block with this color for me to park it and have it be a useful, a, you know, useful thread. So we're gonna do the color in this block and then I'm gonna show you how I end the thread on fabric like this so I can end on the front. Normally, I will run my stitches under 
my threads on the back if I'm flipping my mm, I am like off camera trying to thread my needle that's what that's what I'm doing but I would normally end my threads in the back by running them under my stitches but I'm using my janky frame here I'm cheap ass little $30 frame I picked up at the craft store it's serving its purpose. I guess I shouldn't call it a janky ass frame. It's it's serving its purpose, but um, I don't like flipping my work over when I have it. So I end on the front with this. So I'll show you how to, how I do it with with the Ada. So, anywho, let me see. We talked about column lines. What I'm going to try with this project to see if I can prevent column lines. And I don't know. I'm thinking about maybe trying to convert my full coverage pieces back into, back into parking again. Maybe, uh, maybe once I work on this for a little bit, if I like it, I'll go ahead and um, go ahead and start converting my projects into that. That could be a video I show you too. Maybe not necessarily the the pattern per se. Maybe I'll do a stitch with me, and I'll start like next time I pull out. Won't be this month because I'm doing start it all September. But maybe next time I pull out one of my large full coverage whips, I can do a stitch with me as I convert my piece into a parked piece. I need to come up with a name for this. Stitch and Mommy has the typewriter method. Allison has Royal Rose. I want a name. So doing it like this, if you started your project on the right-hand side, you would simply park to the left instead of the right. But I'm really curious to see if this would solve my problem of getting column lines with parking. It's like, I think I already said this. I don't know, I've filmed this video four mother effing times, so who knows what I've already said on this take. But, so if you, if you hear this twice, sorry, because I've said it, I feel like a million times today, but like my honeymoon sunset piece, I was doing 10, 10 rows down, like 10 by 20 block. And I noticed even with that, I was getting column lines because I was parking below. And, and I really think it has to do with my tension. So what I'm doing with this right here is I'm trying to, I don't know why I'm doing this because I know I'm going to end my thread because of the sheer volume of stitches that's in this block with this color. But say I didn't know I was going to end my thread. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get as close to this corner as I can with my stitches. So I'm not having to jump all over the place when I go to park my thread. So there is a little bit of planning involved. You can't just go all willy nilly. And when I, so when I'm gonna park, when I park, I'm gonna park to the right first. If there's no stitches for that color, where am I at? Here we go. Um, if there's no stitches for that color in the block to the right, I will look in the block below it. And if there's that color down there, I will just park below it. 
If there's not, then I will look in the diagonal block right here because that's the next closest one. I will travel two squares over, like two blocks over. I will do that much. But I'm not gonna travel more than that. I think one of my diagonal pieces I said I did, but I'm not gonna travel more than that. You may as well just start a new thread at that point. I'm not going to travel too diagonal that way, but because that's ends up being seems like it's a lot more. So my plan for this will be to complete this block. And then work the park threads in for block number two. And then we'll see where we're at time-wise. And I may or may not complete block two. I might not though, because I know these videos can get kind of long. My fabric is a little bit loose in my frame, but that's partly because, in my Q-snap, but that's partly because um, my frame is junk and my Q-snap is like a little bit too big for it. So it will kind of twist up and down. So it's loosened up the fabric in the frame. So it is a little bit looser than what I like, but that's okay. What can I talk about? Because now it's like getting too quiet. It's like an awkward date. Um, oh, so my fake plans regarding my whips and stuff. Yeah, so I'm kind of digging what I had said in my last video regarding having the focus. So I think what I'm going to do is... I think I'm going to do what I was talking about for the month of October and try it out and see how I like it. So I'm going to have one of my large full coverage pieces be a focus piece where I stitch on it at least three days a week. Well, no, not at least. I'm going to stitch on it three days a week. And... I want to have a goal for that because it's like, well, yeah, you stitch on it three days a week, but, you know, only doing 100 stitches a day, that's still not going to get you a whole lot of progress, right? So I'm going to set a goal of stitch on it three days a week with a goal of hitting 6,000 stitches on it for that month, right? Because I, I want it to be a realistic goal. I don't want to say, oh, I want to do 10,000 stitches on it because that's a lot. Like if I say I wanna do 6,000 stitches on it, I would be working on it for 12 stitching days or 12 days, right? I would get 12 working days on this piece. That would give me 500 stitches a day. If I said that I wanted to do 10,000, that's gonna be like almost I can't math in my head. Um, if I said I wanted to do 10,000 stitches on it, well, that's 
you know, almost a thousand stitches every time I stitch on it. And that's just not realistic. I mean, I stitch a lot, but there's been some days where I only get 400 and I'm struggling to get that 400. Okay, so I got all my R's done. Thank God. So how I end my threads on the front when I'm working on something like this big honking piece of Ada is I'm going to do a partial pin stitch. Like usually with a pin, I think I think a traditional pin stitch, you like go in, go in the middle, go in on what, the other side, go in the middle, you know. Um, but I'm going to come up between the two holes here. And I'm going in between, so I'm splitting the horizontal threads of the Ada right here. I'm going to go down between the two holes on the other side. I'm going to pull tight so I bury my thread within the Ada. And then I'm just going to come up in a hole. And just clip it close to the fabric. All right. Woohoo, got that one done. All right, so now we're moving on to I, 677. You know, the nice thing about working in these 100, 100 stitch blocks, because, you know, 10 by 10 block is 100 stitches, is that, you know, it's like, well, if you can get a block done, you know you got 100 stitches in on the project. Oh, that's the thread I just cut. I was like, what is that? Um, and like I said, once you get parked threads going, it makes everything go much quicker. Like once you, once you get to a square, to where you're like working in your parked threads, it goes so much faster because you're not having to pull your thread off, you know, find, find your thread, cut at the length. If it's not already cut, it's already there. You just thread your needle and Zoom, you're off. So, yeah, I, um, as much as I love cross country, I mean, every, every method of stitching has its pros and cons. It really does. You just have to find what's, what, what works best for you. Like, you may try this and you don't like it. You're like, oh, I'll give it a try. And you start trying it out and you're like, you know, I don't really like it. That's okay. It's okay. You don't have to like it. If it does not make your stitching life easier and you're not enjoying sitting down to stitch, then that is not the right method for you. Everybody has their own way of stitching. There's no right way. There's no wrong way. You stitch how you want. You want to stitch row by row going all the way across, then go for it. If you want to stitch extreme cross country, then do that. It doesn't matter. As long as you're getting pleasure out of stitching, don't let anyone else tell you otherwise. Don't, don't let anyone tell you how you should be stitching your project. It's your project. If they want it stitched a certain way, then they can stitch it. Um, well, you know what? That's great for when you stitch it, but this is how I want to do it. Okay, so we're nearing the end for the eye. And when you look on here, you see the eye is two stitches down. I don't want to pull my hand out from under my project again. You see the eye is two stitches down from my park, my first park thread up there at the top because I'm part, I'm going to park in that first column right there. So I'm going to go two stitches under my park thread and park my eye right there. One, two. Let me get those, double tap there. Now we're gonna go on to M, 
so another question I've seen regarding park threads is how do you manage all your park threads? Like once you really get going, how do you manage all those park threads? When there's threads that I need to be able to move around, like these threads here, because I'm actively parking in that block, I don't know why I'm having so much trouble threading my needle. When I'm actively parking in this block, I like to keep my threads easier to manage. So I just kind of tuck them around my needle minder right here. But um, if I have a project where I'm further in and I have way more parked threads, um, I've actually braided them before. Like like my Royal Rose, or, my Villa Lorna from Stitching Moon, I am doing that one in Royal Rose, and I'm like halfway across the top of that project right now, just the, just the top 20, the top two blocks, and, but I'm like halfway across the project, and um, so I have a lot of parked threads on that one, so I'm taking like chunks of like three by, like three squares, and just like braiding them together. But um, there's uh, things that you know people get that they just uh, wrap their threads around that kind of hang down off of the project. You can do it however you want. So I know this part is super, super boring for you. However, I figured this was the best way I could possibly think of to show you how to start a parking method. was by starting from the beginning. I didn't want to start with my threads already there because you're going to be like, well, how did, how did you do that? back is starting to hurt too because I'm sitting at an angle. I'm not sitting in my normal stitching spot. I normally sit on my couch. And because of the way I had to set this up, I have the clamp holding, I have my phone in my clamp. My clamp is attached to my dining room table and I'm sitting in a dining room chair and I am leaned over to the right, like my spine is angled to the right with my elbow resting on my thigh because I have my right hand under the project. So... So this is definitely not the most comfortable thing. Okay, I'm done with the M's. So, clear these. So my next M is actually in the third column over and it's this stitch right here. So from this park thread, this one here, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go two down, one, two down, one over. So from this park thread right here, I'm going two down, one over.
And if you ever mess your threads up, and do the do these get tangled up? Yeah, sometimes they do, but for the most part, they really don't. Nothing that you can't easily untangle, at least. All right. Thirty-seven seventy-four. All right. Oh, I'm making pretty good time. So, I don't know if I told y'all, but the f I said it in the third take. I don't know if I said it this time or not. But the first time I filmed this, it was an hour and a half long. No lie. Hour and a half long. So, maybe it is better. I had to keep redoing this over and over again. Because every time I do it, my stitching gets faster. The reason why it was so long was because I wasn't used to two-handed stitching. So it's taking forever. So yeah. All right. Where am I at? All right. All right, so back to my fake plans. So I'm gonna have my focus project that I work on three days a week and I want to have 6,000 stitches by the end of the month on it. And then I will pull that. I will That will no longer be a focus piece at the end of the month. I'm going to do this in October. And, well, and then I'm going to do new start November. So, <laughs> so then I'm going to have 30 more new projects. But then December, I'm going to try it again. Um, and I'm going to have 10 projects I'm going to pick from, I'm going to pick any size. They can be full coverage. They can be my smaller pieces, whatever, doesn't matter. I'm going to have a goal for all of them. I think I'm going to do probably if it's, um, if it's one of my big full coverages, I'm going to say 5,000 stitches. And if it's like one of my medium pieces, like one of my samplers or something, I'll say 3,000. And then all my little ones, like my gnomes and my little mini kits, I'll say like 2,000, right? Or maybe I'll do 6,000, 4,000, 2,000. Maybe I'll just do that. I don't know. I'm still thinking on it. I still got a couple weeks. Um... The difference with having the same, like, you know, because that's the same goal as my focus piece, right? Well, the difference is I don't have to work on those other pieces every single day. So it, I can take as long as I want with those goals, right? So I could say, well, I'm going to work on Springtime Splendor, my purple house piece from Heaven and Earth Designs. I say, well, I'm going to do 5,000 stitches on this one. It could take me, I don't know, four months to get that done. It doesn't matter because it's not one of my, it's not my focus piece. And I don't have deadlines for these goals. I just have a goal of a stitch count. That's it. You know what I mean? So when I hit the goal, that project comes out of my little pile of whips and I select a new project to take its place. And for every five goals I hit, I can start a new project. I was going to say I will allow myself to buy another pattern, but I mean, let's be honest. If I like a piece, I'm going to buy it. I'm not going to wait to be told I can buy something. I might try to wait to be told I can start a project, but I don't know. So that whole new start thing, that might kind of go out the window about waiting to do a new start because <laughs> you know how I am with new starts. But, all right, I hit the end of this. So, I'm going to park this right there it's the furthest over and furthest up. So I'm going to park it. It's going to be one, two, three. 
Ah, there we go. It's going to be the third stitch up from that from that block. So one, two, three. All right, so let's mark off my park stitch. Last one is gonna be this O, 437. eyes have to get old it sucks there we go all right so this these last two stitches here are going to be this O Okay, so as you can see, there's no O over here, right? So I'm gonna, whoopsies. So there's no O over here. So I'm going to look down here and there is one here. Now, because of the way that I'm going to be working my project, I'm going to be working in 10 by 10 blocks, but I'm going to be working down, right? So I'm still going to be parking to the right. So I don't want to park in this one right here because that's too far over. The idea with parking is that when you start working in your threads, and you'll see this shortly, you don't want your park threads to get mixed up with stitches that you're trying to do. So you want to park as far to the edge of where you you would start your project as possible. That's why I was trying to park all these threads up here as far over to the left as possible. And we'll see that in a minute when we start working those in. But I don't want to park here. If I was park in, now if I was working down, then yes, I would park there. But I'm not. I'm going to be working this way and parking this way. So I want to park as far over as possible. So I'm going to park one, two, three stitches down in that first column. So, one, two, three. And we're going to leave that alone. We're not going to mess with it. We're just going to let it hang. Now, we're going to come up to our block here. Now, if I was working this without doing a tutorial, I would then move down to this block and I would work this parked thread. And then I would do my other threads. I would work this park thread in, park to the right, and then work in my other threads. But for the purpose of this tutorial, I want to show you how to work these threads in. So we're going to go ahead and move over to this, and we're going to keep parking to the right if possible. Okay? So what you're going to do is you're going to take your parked threads, all of your parked threads, and you're going to lay them this way right? So that they're out of your way. You want your stitching area clear. So we're going to find the parked thread that is furthest to the right, which will be that one right there. As you can see, it is not going to get mixed up in, like if we tried starting with this one here, it's going to get mixed up with that parked thread and that parked thread and all that mess. And the more parked threads you end up getting as you get more and more into confetti, 
the harder it's going to be. So you start with the one that is furthest to the end of the block that you're working or the section that you're working so that it will minimize you getting your things, um, your, your working thread mixed up with your parked thread. So I'm going to go ahead and get this working. And then if I have enough thread, I'm going to park it up here. So I'm going to take this thread right here. And if you want to double check yourself to make sure that you're right, you can do that. I'm going to double check myself as soon as I get this blasted needle threaded. I used to have a needle threader, but left it at, in a kit or in a project bag or whatever in my ex-boyfriend's house. That was when we were dating. And nothing in that bag was worth me seeing him again. I got, I, he was like, what do you want me to do with your stuff? I was like, throw it away. He's like, even your cross stitch? I was like, yeah, even the cross stitch. That's how much I don't want to see you. So, so if you want to double check to make sure you're right, then you look at your previous thread and it's down two over one. Down two over one. All right. Let's get stitching. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of meander down to the bottom of the block. One, two, three, one, two, three, because I want to work my way back up to the top so that I can park in that top corner. You don't have to you don't have to finish close to where you're going to park, but it does make it a little bit easier when I'm not having to go from like here all the way over to here. And you can do 10 by 10 stitching in a diagonal as well. I've done that before too. So I would do this block and then I did this block and then I would come down here and do this one and then I would come back up here and go boom, boom, boom and just keep doing it that way. That's an option as well. If you want to know more about diagonal parking, Blitz Stitch has a pretty decent tutorial. He's the one who actually taught me how to do diagonal, not diagonal parking, diagonal stitching. Um, he's the one who actually taught me how to, about diagonal stitching. Um, it's like video number five, I believe. It's like really old. It's like four years old. A long time ago. But it's very, very educational. Am I in the right spot? Yeah. All right, so that's all the M's. I'm gonna park in the, I'm gonna park up in this corner here. So it's uh, it's over two and then one, two, three, four. Since I'm not using gridded fabric, I actually have to count where the stupid corner is. So it's over two, one, two, and then up four. Four. One, two, three, four. And you don't have to take off the parking mark when you're marking off your, your piece. You don't have to do that. All right, so we're gonna go, so we're, we've done all those park threads, so the next one that we're gonna do is this one right here, because it's in the second column. So. I 
and take that thread there. And I know this probably doesn't seem like it's much of a time saver, but that's because I'm running my mouth. That's because I am stitching two-handed, which I don't normally do. So I am stitching a lot slower than I normally do. But anyway, as much as I love cross-country stitching, when I get into really, really high confetti areas, that this is my preferred method of stitching. It just makes my life a lot easier. And then as I ease out of the confetti, I tend to kind of drift back towards cross country. So, I mean, if you don't have a lot of, if you don't have, if you have like a lot of solid blocks of color, then parking is dumb. There's no need to park when it's the same damn color over and over again. You know what I mean? So, so if you, if your patterns that you traditionally do are mostly, um, blocks of color, then this probably is not going to be the most ideal method for you. But if you have a piece that has a lot of, um, that has a lot of color changes, you know, then this, this could work for you. I know it certainly helps me out. Keeps, keeps my, um, keeps my mistakes down to a minimum. I mean, I still get mistakes. Don't get me wrong. I still get them, but not as many. All right. So I'm done with the A's in that. So as you can see, when I go to the next block to the right, the A is the, where I'm going to park is one down and two over from that parked M over here. I don't want to bring my, my arm up. So it's the next row down and then two over. All right. So what I'm going to do now, now that we're in the final column is... We're going to start with the bottom here. If I started with this end right here, I would end up getting this mixed up with my other parked thread. So we're going to start at the bottom. And I think this is where people start getting confused because it looks like I have threads all over the place. And in a way I do, but... These threads are parked over here, and these are over here. All right. Did I bump the camera? I'm sorry. Oh my God, this is over an hour? Jesus. I'm sitting here making fun of myself because my first video was an hour and a half and here we are, we hit the hour mark and I'm still stitching. I'm still stitching. So yeah, we are definitely not gonna be finishing block number two. We are going to just work in these parked threads. And then call it a day. So if you guys have any questions about anything, go ahead and let me know in the comment section down below. If you need something explained further, then go ahead and ask away. I will do my best to answer. If you need more clarification, if you want to see more videos on anything, um, by all means, go ahead and ask me. I'll be more than happy to answer. I kind of want to end the video now because we are at an hour and I feel like people get super bored with the long videos. I personally like them. 
I don't mind the long videos because I put them on when I'm cross stitching. And I like being able to just hit play on something and not have to worry about it. About like trying to change, you know, to the next video because my YouTube recommendations, for some reason, it will start pulling up random videos on me about stuff I don't even watch. But I think it's because my kid watches videos on my YouTube. So they're like, I'll end up getting stupid like Minecraft videos. I'm like, what is this mess? But um, yeah, I feel like people are going to get bored with this. But oh well. They can just turn the video off. Um, one person, I will say one person that I really have like uh, gotten into is the Virginia Stitcher. She, um, she's had a channel for, for quite a while now. And she cracks me up. Oh my God. I laugh so hard about something in every video. She cracks me up. And she's a lot like me. Neither one of us edit our videos. Like, I, that's going to be me when I'm 60. I'm like, I'm the same train 20 cars back. Um, but she, uh, there's some pieces of hers that I would not, not stitch. Like, she has Mirabilia's and uh, Lavender Lace and stuff. I, I'm not really into those. But she has some patterns. There's one one episode I watched that I literally wrote down 12 different patterns I wanted to get after seeing her video. I was like, oh, this is not good. All right, so I'm gonna park my little plus minus sign three stitches down from that parked M. So. One, two, three. We're almost done, guys. Oopsies. Sorry. Okay. Now we're going to move on to the eye. And then once you get your parked threads worked in, then you simply go back in and work your block. You know, work your work your threads in like you normally would, you know, park those when you get to the end because you're going to come across colors that you had not worked with yet. You know what I mean? And these colors will slowly run out and you'll have to you know, end your threads and whatnot. Or you'll get like, you know, little ninja stitches where you only have one thread or like one stitch of that color. Hey, Mr. Whiskers. I don't think you can see him. Oh, he's bumping the frame though. Do you mind, sir? Oh, you see his tail over to the left. So I think what I'm probably going to do is end the video after I finish working this thread in and I'm going to leave this last thread because I think that one has a lot and you don't need to watch me fill that in. I, mean, I could technically end it now but I kind of want to just finish this thread and park it and be done with it.
All right, so as you can see here, I'm gonna park this I two stitches over from that furthest A, that, that furthest park thread over here on the, on the, that one, two stitches over from my A thread. So I'm gonna move these so I can see it better. I go two stitches over and park there. Okay, so park that, park those off. So I'm not gonna do this last one because of how much there is. We're gonna call it a day, oh, more R. Uh, we're gonna call it a day. So that's the basics of parking. So I would work this in and then I would get the R and I would fill that block in and then I would come over, I would either come down here, work in this thread and then fill this in but that's the gist of parking from the start. So when you see this project in the future, this is going to have a lot more parked threads on it. And then hopefully it will kind of, you won't be so overwhelmed when you see it. So again, if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section down below. If you need me to explain something further, let me know what it is you don't understand and I will do my best to explain it. <coughs> um, if you want to see more videos of anything, let me know. And um, if you want, yeah, I don't know. I don't even know what to ask. Uh, if you liked what you had to see and you're not already subscribed to me, go ahead and hit the subscribe button down below and the bell to be notified whenever I post a new video. And um, I think that's about it. So take care, guys. Happy stitching. And I will see you in my next video. Take care, everybody. Bye.